Hello folks, uh, good evening wherever you might be. It's good evening in South Carolina and I am imaging uh, Jupiter and Saturn tonight uh, between the clouds and uh, it's not going great but uh, I'm going to image uh, the best I can for as long as I can. Uh, so uh, let me share my screen with you and we'll uh, see what's going on. This is uh, my uh, edge. Uh, it's a uh, see the edge is a an 8 inch edge and I have a 2.5x power mate uh, it's a, a teleview get rid of that it's a teleview uh, Barlow and uh, it is parfocal and which just really means that I can uh, uh, put it in take it out <coughs> swap it with other parfocal power mates I have a 4x and focus should be reasonably close you don't have to go uh, spend another 10 minutes trying to get your focus back the scene conditions aren't really good tonight I'm shooting the planets are all real low in the sky from our neck of the woods but uh, I've been on Saturn now for about uh, 10 minutes I took a 5,000 frame image just a few minutes ago and uh, it seems to be going pretty good so uh, I'm gonna take a uh, another one and I'm gonna go up here to uh, hang on a minute I'm gonna go up here to quick capture and I'm gonna go down to 5000 I have my uh, exposure set up to 53 milliseconds uh, which is kind of slow and uh, my gain is right at 280 I'm shooting for a histogram that's slightly under 50%. Just pay attention to the white line. And uh, that advice I got from Joss Palmer with uh, Roper Mountain Astronomy, or Roper Mountain Astronomers. Um, he also said, don't worry about the gain. Push it if, as much as you have to in order to get a faster frame rate. But I am really nervous about raising the gain that high uh, because I'm uh, I'll take a slower framework rate uh, my tracking is pretty good uh, I haven't had to move the mount or adjust the mount and Saturn staying centered uh, so that's uh, what's important but uh, it's centered but you can see that it's moving and that's just due to the turbulence of the atmosphere especially shooting low in the sky in the 30 degree altitude range uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about let's go over to our uh, sky safari and uh, here's Saturn right here let me get the we're not current time but here's Saturn right here and <clears throat> it's not even quite 30 degrees this latitude line here is at 30 degrees so we'll uh, double click there let's see uh, doesn't want to go let's double click on Saturn Hang on a minute. Keyboard's not working right. Hang on. And there we go. And right now we are altitude at 25 degrees, so it's almost as though, well I'll show you here, let's go see the telescope let's uh, open it up and so you can see it's just uh, barely shooting over my house as a matter of fact there it is 
That little booger right there is Saturn. And that's what I have a bead on. I think it could be Jupiter. Uh, they're right now they look about 10 degrees, 7 to 10 degrees separated in the sky. But uh, I'm not sure. That's either Saturn or Jupiter. I'd have to go outside to know for sure. But uh, that's it. Let me uh, bring it a little bigger. But that's uh, one. I think that's probably a Jupiter. Saturn's probably going to be more out of the picture, probably up here from just the angle of the scope. But if you'll go outside and look uh, towards the uh, south, uh, I'll show you. Here is the uh, here's due south, and uh, Saturn is uh, getting ready to. Uh, uh, and here's Jupiter right behind it. I think uh, Jupiter is what we were uh, looking at on the uh, camera, the surveillance camera. But uh, I'm going to be going back and forth between the Twix of them. Let's go back to uh, our uh, Jupiter, and it's moved a little bit out of the crosshairs. There's going to be some drift throughout the night. Uh, and I'll recenter Jupiter, but that that's close enough for uh, for what we're doing. Uh, we finished the 5,000 frames, and I'm going to take another uh, 5,000 frames. And they're going along pretty good. The planetarium software that I'm using is... Uh, Carte de Cell, Carte de Cell, and um, let's bring us down here. Okay, it's. Uh, I love this program. Uh, I connect my camera to it. Uh, I mean, I connect my mount to it, and uh, right now it shows that my mount is centered on Saturn. And uh, when I'm ready to uh, go back to Jupiter, I'll just uh, go up here and I've got them kind of pre-programmed and I'll put Jupiter in there and I'll go over here and click on sync and uh, it'll go over to Jupiter. But uh, for the time being, I'm finishing up this imaging session with uh, the... Uh, Oh, I've got another telescope uh, in operation also. I have the uh, uh, StellarView 70T. Uh, it's a tripl triplet refractor. And uh, the clouds I knew were going to be uh, a disaster most of the night. I've actually been pretty fortunate to be able to uh, uh, take as uh, many frames of uh, Saturn as I've been able to take albeit the scene is pitiful. But uh, what I thought I would do while I was uh, playing around going from planet to planet uh, is I'd go ahead and take some calibration uh, files. So I'm taking darks all night long, at least almost six hours worth. And then tomorrow uh, I'll put the flat panel on and I'll take flats. So I'm just updating my calibration files Right now, uh, I'm taking 50 bias, 20, 15 second uh, looms for dark. I mean, yeah, darks. I'm using the luminance filter, 20, uh, 30 second darks, and 20, 45, 60, 90. And uh, I, I really don't use anything but uh, uh, these exposure settings. So, uh, but I'm building another library. Uh, I do this about once a month. I do it when uh, there seems to be uh, no threat from rain throughout the night, but still the clouds are a hindrance, so imaging is kind of off the table. And uh, I'll just catch up with my calibration frames. Uh, we can go ahead and put the mount, I mean the surveillance camera, back to sleep. Let's come back here. 
and let's go over and see how our Saturn is doing and that would be on Astro 2 and right here okay yeah we've slipped a little more out of the frame or out of the crosshairs we're still capturing uh, we're going for 5,000 frames we're clicking along at about 18 frames per second so it takes a while to get the 5,000 frames but that's just fine we're at uh, approaching 4500 and another 500 frames and I think I'll head over to Jupiter and uh, see what's happening there when we're done actually I'm gonna stay here I tell you what I'll do I'll process this very quickly if you pay attention you can see this wobbling around it's hard to believe that there might be some good information that could be extracted from this just because it just seems so uh, blurry unfocused undetailed and uh, again it's just wobbling around so uh, let's do this let's bring up uh, auto stacker and we'll open up this was from the other night uh, let's uh, we got tonight planets Saturn and this is the last one we took so let's bring it up there it is and uh, that noise you hear is our clouds. We got clouds that are uh, interrupting my view here, so I'm glad it's over with. Uh, we'll drop down the sound. So let's analyze this. Uh, we want to make sure we got planet checked, dynamic background, local. Uh, we're not double stacking. We want auto size. So let's analyze this picture. You could scrub through this video to see if there is a better uh, view of that, but uh, I won't. It's going to take a few minutes, folks, because there are quite a few frames uh, to work on. You can see that we've all we've lost Saturn altogether. It's uh, the clouds are covering it up. Here it comes. But I'll be battling this throughout the night. It's the way it goes. What's going to happen after this buffering completes is uh, it's going to give a quality graph about right here. And uh, it that will uh, give me some insight as to how many frames are worth keeping and how many should be discarded um, and I expect that uh, I'm just going to guess that about 30 percent of them are keepers and 30 percent of 5,000 would be uh, uh, 1500 frames would be stacked but I don't know it's sometimes as high as 50 percent we're going to find out real quick because it's about done. Okay, hey, it's actually better than 50. Where this green line intersects this, uh, this is a kind of a the middle of the road, a 50% uh, of the images, not of the images, of the frames. Each, this histogram is representative by the 5,000 frames. There are uh, 
uh, these frames are above the line in quality and these frames are below the line in quality and roughly if this is 25 percent this blue vertical line is 50 percent and this is 75 it's telling me that somewhere between 50 and 75 percent say 62 percent of my uh, frames are above 50 percent and to me that's worth keeping but what I'm going to do is just keep 50 percent and uh, I'll get rid of 50 percent so I need to now place a grid on Saturn and I'm just going to do that automatically I'm going to take uh, 48 uh, as the uh, 48 points to um, place this grid and it is pretty much covered it up. I'm going to add a couple more because this thing has wobbled quite a bit and maybe it has wobbled out of this frame so I'll get on the outside and uh, let's go ahead and stack and what it's going to do is uh, it's going to take the top 50% of the 5,000 frames and it's going to stack them together into one file and it will be a TIFF file. It'll be a large file. And that's what's happening now. You can see that uh, we've completely lost Saturn. The clouds have uh, really mucked up things. So let's, um, let's just go outside and see if we can uh, start our camera let's see if we can see either Jupiter or Saturn here in the it's probably all covered up well no we're uh, we actually can see Jupiter which tells me let me uh, bring up PhD 2 and I've got that window open and that just tells me that all of this is cloud area so let's go to Jupiter or let's go to the other planet I think it's Jupiter and uh, let's see if they're covered up in clouds so we want to go to Jupiter yep and we're going to click slew and the mount will start moving and our stood should start moving There it goes. To Jupiter. I use PhD to help me center it. Okay. Well, we're getting clouds here too, but there's Jupiter. And I'm going to take my mount. And we're going to move uh, south. Uh, north and then I think it's east I want to bring it into the bullseye there yeah, going the other way. There we go. Let's go north again. And anyway, it should be. Let's bring up our software. Okay, there's Jupiter, and we are way too hot. So let's bring us down. And there you go, friends. We're shooting through clouds, and it's crazy, too. See, it's going to go away because of the clouds. But evidently, they're not as bad. I tell you what, let's do one other thing. Let's bring up our outside camera. Yeah, that's where, this is Jupiter here. That little white dot is Jupiter. That's where this thing's aimed at now. So I was wrong a while ago. 
thinking it was Saturn. We should see the red spot tonight because it's due to uh, rotate around. Uh, again, the clouds are going to mess things up. The increase and decrease in luminosity is just nothing more than cloud stuff. All right, let's go back to uh, Auto Stacker. And actually, I was on the right place. Here's Auto Stacker. And we have we haven't finished yet. We're still stacking those frames. And let's bring Jupiter back up. See, do we remember which way we need to go? Uh, and now we're centered again, but it doesn't, it, it's crazy. My, uh, I'm hopeful that it'll get better later on tonight, but if you pull up the weather map, and I'll do that now, and uh, let's go over to, uh, it's actually showing here that uh, we're going into about 11 o'clock, and it's almost 11 o'clock, so it shows that we have dark skies, but our scene is only average transparency is below average and that's killing us and uh, hourly it looks as though at 11 o'clock which is right here about 42 percent of the sky is cloudy so we're covered up with clouds tomorrow night looks like it will be a high of 25 percent and a low of about 15 percent clouds uh, I ought to be able to deal with that with very little wind and uh, temperatures are going to be about 88 but it's going to come down into the 70s so tomorrow night ought to be pretty good we don't have a moon interfering with imaging so I'll take some deep space images and may play around uh, going uh, back to the planets with the edge and then take some wide field deep space let's look at some real time ra radar this is what we're up against uh, here we are in South Carolina and we have this mess that's just kind of circulating around the upstate and we're right there in the upstate of, uh, of South Carolina so that's what it is and if you look at astronomical scene conditions uh, let's go down here to 11 o'clock uh, we're at 1.36 arc seconds which isn't too bad with a rating of five and four, which is theoretically not too bad, but I know it's not that good. I would say it's probably in the in the more in the uh, 1.8, 1.9, uh, range. But uh, it was better earlier today, uh, and that doesn't mean that isn't so much the clouds. It's just it is the uh, turbulent atmosphere, but we got a lot of humidity. And when you're shooting low in the sky, it seems worse. If you're shooting straight up, you're shooting through much uh, a much less dense atmosphere. Of uh, a lot of heat comes off the surface of the uh, earth, rooftops, streets, building tops and heat from the day it radiates and so uh, that thermal heat is uh, wicked all right let's go back and see where we are with uh, auto stacker we're still stacking uh, as soon as it's finished we'll do an analysis and then it'll recombine those into the uh, TIF file and uh, we'll stay on uh, I'll stay on the air uh, continuing this uh, until this is done uh, we have completely lost uh, we've completely lost our uh, 
due to clouds our uh, planet let's go back to the sky and see if it shows up nah we don't even have it uh, in our view clouds are uh, let me uh, turn off the uh, infrared light that's outside and see if uh, we'll see if uh, when that goes off if the clouds are showing up nah We'll turn the uh, infrared back on. And that just kind of lights up my backyard, but uh, it has no, it doesn't do anything uh, to the cameras. It's IR light, just doesn't create any problem. Oh, see what's happened? It's coming back here, and then we saw Jupiter. And it's gone away uh, well that's what we're up against so let's uh, bring uh, yeah this is coming and going this is usually pretty big and when it blinks red that's just telling me that I'm losing my stars due to the, due to the clouds Okay, let's head back over to Auto Stackert. And still stacking. We're running at about 95% of it, though, is stacked. So, um, I'm going to move, uh, looks like it's come back a little bit. I need to move uh, Jupiter Okay, uh, if it should come back, we'll have it centered. Uh, raise this way up. Maybe a bit. Nah, it is really behind some clouds. Hey. Nah. Let's go back down to about okay well we're just fighting clouds folks and let's go back to auto stackard okay we are done so I'll uh, close this program out and we're going to bring up Reggie stacks While this is booting up, if you would consider liking this video, if you like it, and subscribing, uh, then you'll be notified when I'm doing these. I do a lot of live uh, imaging. Uh, I don't know why I didn't go live tonight. Uh, I do know why. I, I, I didn't think it would be worth doing it. I figured the clouds would make it a bust from the beginning. Okay, let's go up to uh, today. Uh, to today, this is uh, when I imaged on the fifth. Let's go to today, and, and there's our TIFF file. I don't want to stretch it, and 
there she is. Let's uh, show the full image. And the first thing I want to do is to uh, do a uh, a automatic color balance and I don't need that anymore I'm gonna take gamma and I'm going to make a point here I'm gonna put a contrast curve I'm gonna raise this up slightly and this down kind of a contrast s curve and that works we can bury that one I'm going to bring up the uh, histogram and I'm going to take this slider on the right I'm going to move it up I'm not planning on clipping anything but I'm going to come up just a little more. And I'm going to take this slider, move it just a tad to brighten things up. Okay. We're going to leave it there. Don't want to do too much, uh, much more than that. Let's see. We want to, uh, we can sleep now. Uh, okay. Uh, let's uh, resize the image. No, not yet. We'll resize it last. Let's go over to our wavelets and let's uh, take number the fourth and let's bring it over to about here let me also double click to make sure that double click on Saturn bring this in some more bring this up some more bring this up some bring this up some We're going to bring, see if we can bring out some more details on the rings. And we'll keep going to pushing these wavelets. Uh, I'm going to get a zoom look here. I don't want to create too much noise and uh, okay uh, let's add some sharpening now on this oh let's go up to 110 let's go up to 120 and I'm paying attention to the noise on this. Let's go up to another and let's go up to 110. Let's push all these up to 110. And Okay, the rings are getting a little, uh, there's a little more detail in them. Let's uh, bring the noise up to five on each of the wavelets. This is just, uh, all these are judgment decisions. It's uh, where you just kind of play around. You can spend a lot of time playing around on this. Uh, but you want to keep your step in increments uh, to zero. Uh, you want to have linear check, Gaussian checked, your initial layer at one, and then adjust these sliders to taste. 
Uh, what I'm going to do is now bring up image resize and I'm going to go up to about 150 percent and I'm going to resize the image and when you do that you lose some of your detail but I like looking at it so we're going to click on resize then I'm going to go ahead and close this I'm going to click on do all and it's going to do everything we have asked it to do and then I'm going to save and I'll save it to Saturn number one this is the first one I did and it's also the last one I took and we'll click on save now I'll bring this into Photoshop and I'll use another curves layer and a levels layer to incrementally brighten it some and also saturate it. I really don't like uh, the saturation um, that you can uh, do with uh, over here. Uh, I don't like how it saturates. I'd rather do that in Photoshop. but. Uh, Let's uh, close that out. We've processed that one stack of images. And, oh, we got Jupiter back. Let's take a, let's bring this down. We're at 63 frames a second. I want to um, see if I can guide. I want to move Jupiter over just a tad. Let's go over uh, east. Is that it? Yeah. And let's go uh, no, wrong way again. We've got to go down just a little bit towards the center of the bullseye. And then pinch it west just a bit. Oh, it's getting smaller, which means the clouds are back. Oh, well, let's go see what Jupiter's doing here. It's gone. Let's bring up uh, our... Uh, the clouds are just giving us a fit. So... I, I can tell it. Oh, it's back. Uh, these little dots on either side, those are some of the moons of Saturn. Saturn. And let's go back to Saturn. Let's take a gamble. And now nah, I shouldn't have taken that gamble. I'm not going to open it up. Uh, let's go back to our. Uh, Hang on. I inadvertently opened up Sequence Generator Pro when I really only wanted to get back to Sharp Cap. So let's go up and shut this down. And let's go back to uh, Sharp Cap, which is right here. And we've lost our uh, clouds or. They're just passing by. You can see them covering them up. Well, folks, I'm going to say goodnight to you. I'm going to continue uh, babysitting this, and hopefully there'll be a long enough break in the clouds that I'll be able to get a couple 5,000 frame captures of uh, uh, more of Saturn and a couple of uh, those... Uh, captures also in uh, of Jupiter but uh, I don't think it's going to happen uh, tonight though so with all that being said uh, y'all have a good evening have a great Sunday and uh, clear skies to all you guys